I talk a lot about ingredients, products, and cosmetic treatments I recommend to my patients or for you all watching. But today, I want to share with you the cosmetic treatments that I do or have done. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board-certified dermatologist and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel here, I love to talk about all things skin and skincare related. So the cosmetic procedures that I perform mostly includes neuromodulators, so Botox injections, fillers, the lasers, and I also have a nurse anesthetist who does chemical peels and microneedling. I also try to really work with our residents and give them an opportunity to practice cosmetics during their rotation with me because that's something that I wish I had more hands-on experience really throughout training. So let's talk about the cosmetic procedures I have done. Now when it comes to cosmetic treatment, I believe this is something that's very personal and should be catered to your budget, your concerns, and your goals. I get asked all the time like when is the right time to start this procedure? Procedure. When should I try Botox? Is it too early? Is it too late? Or even when it comes to skincare products, when should I start using a neck cream or eye cream? And although, you know, I personally think that there is never too late, a time that's never too late to start using skincare products or cosmetic procedures, we do have a lot of millennials who are coming into our office requesting for these rejuvenation. I think it, you just have to really take everything into consideration. But for me, my goal really is for me to just look healthier, refreshed, less tired. And I really want to focus on minimizing the signs of aging, fine lines, refining and evening my skin tone, refining the texture and hyperpigmentation that I often can get with acne. I also feel like I haven't done as many procedures on myself as maybe some other cosmic dermatologists would do, mostly because I, it's hard for me to find the time, but also I do take good care of my skin for majority of the time. And I feel like because I do that, I don't need to spend as much on some of the procedures. But again, that is just me personally, and that is my decision. And so what I do do regularly is Botox injections. My first Botox experience was actually in residency, and it was actually into my masseter muscles. I have severe teeth grinding bruxism to the point where actually I wore away my dental fillings. And so so that was the very first time I've ever had any sort of cosmetic injection onto my face. And also I really wanted to explore whether that facial slimming that was super popular in Asia made a difference on me. And I really didn't. It helped with the teeth grinding, but I definitely did not get that V jawline that I kind of saw on a lot of the Asian South Korean um, before and after photos. And then I actually started getting more regular injections into my forehead and crows, which is where I normally get Botox started about four or five years ago and I have been keeping that up. I actually did not have a lot of fine lines or deep wrinkles when I started get, getting Botox because I'm actually a person who's very mindful of consciously not making those facial movements that does come over time. So like your frown lines or 11s or the horizontal lines from you know, moving your eyebrows. But I wanted to just get a little bit of Botox for prevention. And so right now, you know, when I frown, lift up on my eyebrow, it's, <laughs> there's Botox there. And so that is what I do regularly. Other injectables I've had into my face are hyaluronic acid fillers. And I've had just a little bit into my nasal labial fold, right? Actually at the nose to soften the nasal labial folds that were kind of deepening from my sleepless nights as a new mom a few years ago. And I, the last time I've had it done was probably more than six seven months ago. And I actually really want to get some done on my lips. I've always been slightly more conscious of my thinner lips. And so I've always wanted a little bit of a fuller lips. And so hopefully in the future, when the opportunity is right, I want to get some fillers in my lips. But that's the other injection that I've had onto my face is um, our fillers. You know, for those chemical peels, I really liked is it really helped to make my skin look more glowy, really helped to get rid of that dead and dull skin buildup, and also helped a lot with hyperpigmentation that I would get intermittently along my cheeks and jawline from my acne. And with retinol peels, as I mentioned earlier, it really helps to, again, improve skin cellular turnover, hyperpigmentation, also stimulate collagen. But I will post a little snippet here that I actually demonstrated a retinol peel and my experience, and this was a couple years 
years ago using PCA line of um, retinol peel that we use and offer in our clinic and I just peeled in sheets and so that was really fun to do and I would love to get back to doing that down the road. So the treatments that I would do a few times a year includes using a V-beam laser to zap some of the broken blood vessels on my nose. I have a few of those on my nose probably from some damage as well as blowing my nose and I also have a few broken on my cheeks so I would do those a few times a year and it really helps to minimize the appearance of those little dilated blood vessels or telangiectasias. Another treatment that I like to alternate that I would do maybe once or twice a year is a resurfacing treatment. And so we have microneedling as well as a fractionated laser, the dual Fraxel. And so these two work similarly and we have them because they're safer than the ablative fractionated laser and because of the skin and color patients that we have in our practice. And so they're going to be a little bit more gentle. It's still fairly effective for the skin rejuvenation, some of the superficial rejuvenation. And how both of these work essentially is microneedling, you're using the actual needle or sometimes radio frequency microneedling to puncture into the skin. And then with laser, usually, you know, using heat and you're creating these micro zones of injury. These areas are not big enough to cause scarring but they're big enough to stimulate wound healing and then a part of wound healing is basically cleaning out the dead old stuff and stimulating more collagen production you also get platelet rich plasma stimulation all that adds to basically a more refreshed and rejuvenated and tighter and healthier looking skin so these are both great for treatment the most common things we do in office includes like acne scars fine lines wrinkles on even skin texture tone the dual fractional laser has two different wavelengths. One goes a little bit deeper for a little bit deeper resurfacing to help with some of the fine lines, tightening of the skin, helping with acne scars. And then the other wavelength helps with some of the more superficial concerns like uneven skin tone, some of the freckling of the skin from chronic sun damage. So I have had both done and this is something that I would like to continue to do a few times a year. Another cosmetic procedure that is done so commonly that we actually don't feel like it's cosmetic but in reality it is is actually just buzzing away sun freckles or even in skin of color patients these benign growth called dermatosis papulosa nigra which I have a lot of on my cheeks that literally just popped up exploded during pregnancy and these are benign growth that we all get as we get older and we tend to get a lot more in skin of color patients or see a lot more in skin of color patients for example like if you look at Morgan Freeman or Barack Obama they have a lot of those on their cheeks and you know they are benign and sometimes we can maybe medically treat them but for the most part they're cosmetic and treating them is actually quite satisfying and it's one of my favorite things to treat actually and what it involves is using just a little bit of electric needle and literally on a low setting and just zapping the superficial layer of the skin we try to prep the skin and prep the patient by applying a topical numbing medicine you know, 30 minutes to an hour beforehand so they're slightly more comfortable but this electric needle literally just melts away that growth which is very very super superficial on the top surface of the skin and literally and just wipe it away come up kind of almost like chars it away and it works really really well at removing the spot and when done right really causes very minimal discoloration and it's really considered a safe treatment for removing those age spots in skin of color patients. I've never had it done on myself but I wanted to because there was one that was just bugging and itching the heck out of me but luckily that irritation went away but at some point I think I kind of want to have these buzzed down the road. That's pretty much it. I haven't really had a bad experience or would say there are any procedures that I would never ever do again. I think if anything, I really look forward to trying some more, especially having my lips filled. So hopefully I will get an opportunity to do that in the future. Now, when it comes to doing cosmetic procedures, guys, remember this is a very personal decision and choice. So if you're unsure or even just thinking about it, visit your you know trusted board certified dermatologist or trained professional who's experienced with cosmetic procedures because what needs to be done really should be dependent on you know what you're comfortable with what bothers you your goals and also your budget but if you have any sort of questions this is where talking to your dermatologist and coming up with a personal plan is really really helpful and important also, if there are any cosmetic procedures that you would like me to explain more in detail, let me know. I'd be really happy to make a follow-up video on it. Again, if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see you guys next time. Bye!